When you're in college, it's good to try out different things. For UMaine undergrad Luke Goldman, he's not only trying new things on campus. Okay. He's trying out a relatively new way of studying DNA, which could hold the key to understanding our changing climate. It's called eDNA, or environmental DNA. eDNA has only really become a field in the, uh, in the past, like, 12, 10 to 12 years. And we're really only scratching the surface of the application of this emerging tool. Normally, if you want to study the genetics of a life form, you take a tissue sample. Let's start with a mushroom. You would take a small fragment and break it down to extract the DNA strands from the cells. But now, using new technology, you can get many different kinds of DNA from just one sample. If you grab a portion of soil, you can break down the cells of any organism in there and have the potential to see what kinds of life live in that ecosystem. From tissue of mushrooms to the hair of a moose. Luke Goldman says this process can better help scientists understand how an ecosystem is handling the effects of climate. And that's exactly what Goldman and his classmate Dami Kolawole set out to do. They took the journey from Orono to Washington County to a mountain well known to scientists along Bear Brook. The two load up and hike more than an hour to the research site. This is very steep. Climbing and out of breath, the students are looking specifically for fungi. And Luke has quite the knowledge of mushrooms in Maine. They're a type of hallucinogen, um, and supposedly they like, take away your perception of fear and danger. That's likely a North American destroying angel. That's a gourmet mushroom. Some people think it has uh, medicinal value. Finally, they arrive at the first location to collect eDNA samples. We're actually going in that direction now. Oh no. <laughs> Why, oh no, you're not carrying the cooler. But Luke and Dami aren't looking for any old mushroom. They're actually looking for a fungi that can help absorb greenhouse gases. They're looking for mycorrhiza fungi, not your typical red cap mushrooms. These ones are much smaller. Mycorrhiza fungi will grow at the roots of trees. The trees take in the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and feed it to the mycorrhiza fungi. The mycorrhiza fungi will in turn bring nitrogen out of the soil and into the tree, forming a beneficial relationship for both. And that's exactly what Luke and Dami are hoping to find. According to UMaine, the Bear Brook region was purposely polluted by scientists for research 30 years ago. And over time, it developed an oversaturation of nitrogen in the soil, which means more greenhouse gases are loose in our atmosphere. But hopefully today, you know, after six years, we'll see a, a solid rebound. Scientists stopped adding nitrogen to the soil six years ago, and Luke and Dami are expecting to find mycorrhizal fungi has come back. And Luke says that would be huge. It means that soils that were polluted and uh, degraded due to irresponsible agriculture through the use of unchecked uh, fertilization would have the ability to rebound quickly. It means that the damage that we've done over the past uh, 50 to 80 years with this process is, is reversible. The pollution done by scientists here mimic the effects some farming can have on soil. If the soil in Bear Brook is able to recover and harbor healthy life for fungi, it means that we have the ability to do that today rather than waiting a number of decades or centuries for our soils to recover. Taking their samples after hours hiking through Washington County. The uh, soil particles are mixed in here. Luke is back at his lab at UMaine, finding out what could be the key to controlling greenhouse emissions. And as Maine's changing climate presents challenges for farmers, such as extreme drought and rain events, learning about how their soil recovers is extremely important. In Orono, Jack Molmud, New Center, Maine.